Hey, what's up? It's your boy Is, and I want to be a favorite rapper. And thank you for tuning in. It's Black Future Month. As promised, each week during February, I'm going to release a new video talking about things that I think that black people could do to make our future better. So stay tuned, and I'll be back in just a moment. Welcome to my channel. My name is Is316, or simply IZ. I'm a socially conscious hip hop artist, community activist radio and TV personality and entrepreneur. I've produced and released several albums as well as met some of my favorite artists. But this is my channel and I want to be your favorite MC. All right, all right, all right. Man, I'm so ecstatic, man. You wouldn't even believe how happy I am about the channel, how well it's going. Uh, the video from last week got almost 10,000 views, which is by far my best video. So I know that you guys are loving and liking it. And so as I'm looking at statistics, I see that almost half of the people who watch my videos are not subscribers. If you're already watching the video, it only takes just a second to hit that subscribe button. Help me reach 1,000 people, uh, 1,000 subscribers. Man, I've just reached 600 this week. I'm so ecstatic. So I'm like a third of the way there. So without further ado, we're gonna get into this week's video for Black Future Month which is the five things that I feel that we can do for progress as a community as a whole. So not everybody's gonna agree, this ain't uh, very scholastic or very studious, it's just things in my heart that I feel that is blacks we can do to progress and help each other going in the future. So number one, number one is a rule that uh, I have is eat with your brother, not off your brother, right? So basically that says find ways to do business with your brother to benefit both of you and not um, just one of you. And when I say brother in this sense, uh, I am talking about black people, but I'm also talking about anybody who's like-minded with you, right? Who cares about your community and your culture. So it's so important that we understand this and that we learn to do good business with each other as a consumer and as a producer. So what I mean is, oftentimes in our neighborhood, we want to support the new restaurant, let's say, right? But when you go to the restaurant, uh, their hours aren't consistent. Uh, when you go in, sometimes the, the staff can be a little nasty with you. Maybe they need some uh, QC, some quality control with their with the product. You'll go in one time and your portion will be like this and then you'll come in another time and your portion will be different. All those things matter. When you go to McDonald's in Tupelo, Mississippi and get a Big Mac, it tastes like a Big Mac when you go to, you know, Birmingham, Alabama, you know. So on that end, we got to do better. And then for the people who are being a consumer at this place, you got to understand that, you know, even McDonald's started somewhere. And so give them a break. You know, maybe if they need to work on something, kindly leave a comment and, you know, tell people about them. You know, spend your money with people in your community. And part of this is that you want to make sure that you're not spending your dollar with people who will use that money against your community. So number one is eat with your brother, not off your brother. Number two. Number two is education. And uh, in particular, the thing I think that will help us a lot is by sending our children to HBCUs. Um, they should be taught by people who culturally understand them. Certain things you can read in a book all day and um, it'll never be the same as the life experience. So I graduated from Wichita State University. I double major in political science and ethnic studies. And part of ethnic studies teaches you a lot of things about other cultures. I thought it was so interesting and uh, important for me to learn about other cultures because I understand how misunderstood my own culture is. I think a lot of times the things that black people do are misinterpreted by people who are outside of the culture, but they have the opportunity to uh, interpret those things in a public manner because we don't have representation in the media in that type of way. But I think that that's changing. But I think they're sending our children to HBCU so that they can uh, become culturally minded and understand our heritage, understand what things will be good going forward. And, uh, you know, just think about it. Like, imagine if LeBron would have went to college and he would have went to um, a HBCU. Look what the trend would have set. So then your number one um, 
all your major athletes, you know, are, are basically black, 80% of them, 90% of them. So if a player like LeBron goes to HBCU and that trend starts, now all of a sudden when you look at the top 25 ranking each week, you'll see schools like Langston, you'll see schools like uh, FAMU, you'll see schools like Hampton, that would be your number one, number two, number three schools in the nation and a lot of the funding and dollars is going to the traditional blue blood schools who a lot of them were guilty of not even admitting blacks until you know the near the recent future uh, it, would, it would totally change the landscape then ESPN would be giving those dollars to those schools that would in turn educate our people back uh, to help our community so I say educate yourself you know send your kids to HBCUs and another part of it is fact checking uh, we got to learn to fact check. You know, when you are going through things and you hear a lot of stuff, word of mouth is king in the black community. It always has been and it always will be. So one person will say something to you and without fact checking it, you'll listen to it and go repeat it to somebody else. That can be detrimental. Sometimes it's good, but do your research, right? Educate yourself. Number three. Number three is um, important. And that's eating better, creating better health habits. Um, a lot of our seniors are suffering. Not only are they having poor health, but they don't have the finances to get affordable health care or they don't have access to it. Um, so traditionally, uh, our cultural foods, southern type of foods and uh, soul foods uh, just aren't the best for us. And so it's important for us to New, put new spins on those and learn new ways of eating and, and promoting healthy eating to our children. We even pass on our bad eating habits to our kids, you know what I mean? I see people feeding their babies fried chicken, you know what I mean? They're like, you know, six months old. I'm not judging nobody, you know, do what you do what you want. But, you know, we both know that that baby should be eating vegetables and more fruits and drink more water because we should. So I encourage you to go look up people like Layla Africa, uh, Dr. CB, and do your research about, you know, health and how you can be uh, the best you can be and optimal because what's the point in like making a whole bunch of money and being successful and getting to the bag if your health is bad, right? So we got to eat better. We got to women. You got to feed your man better. You know what I'm saying? If you love him, there's power of life and death in that pot. So what you put in that pot could be either killing your man or, or saving him. And men, we got to quit putting up the fight. When she put the extra vegetables on your plate, I know you want another piece of meatloaf because I want one too. You know what I'm saying? But go on, eat the vegetables. That green juice that she be drinking is like $3 a bottle. And you looking at her like, why she drinking it? I get it. I get it. I don't want to spend $3 on juice neither. But if it's going to save your life, then go ahead and do it. And uh, most importantly for the men, you might want to eat better because <laughs> I don't think you're ready for that little blue pill. Moving on. The next one is very important because I think it's a catalyst to changing our culture going forward in the future. And that's black love. And I'm not just talking about love between, you know what I'm saying, like uh, um, mates, right? I'm talking about love for your community, love for your family, love for, you know what I'm saying, your culture in general and a healthy self-esteem, you know what I mean? Like, yo, with all the stuff that we go through as black people, I still wouldn't trade it. I still love the experience, man, because we, the trendsetters are so much, man, we always got the coolest lingo, you know what I'm saying? We always the coolest people ever, man. Like, everybody had that old school dude on their block that said all the coolest shit. You know what I'm saying? He just had all the cool sayings and he was wise. When you had a problem, you go talk to him. You know what I'm saying? The kind of block elder. But uh, more so on the family aspect, I think that the way that we change our trajectory going forward is to make family important again and to make your last name important again. Like when you come from a town like Wichita, Kansas, pretty much everybody knows everybody. So I remember being a little kid and out, you know, in the store or maybe in the community cussing or doing something I know I didn't have no business doing. Not really was my, you know what I'm saying, my little brother Aaron. Not me, mama, I swear. But you know what I'm saying, people be like, ain't you Miss Reynolds boy? And automatically I knew I had messed up. You know what I'm saying? Before I could even get home, my granny knew, you know what I'm saying, I had been out in the community acting a fool. Well, what that made you do is have pride in your name and how you conducted yourself because you didn't want to be a shame on 
your society, I mean, your culture, on your family. And I think when we get back to that, and when it means something, for your last name to mean something again is going to be very important for us going forward. And we're going to have to rebuild our families for uh, generations after generations. Our family has been torn apart. But it's a time now to heal. It's a time to forgive. It's a time to learn to work together. And uh, that is one of the main things that I think is going to help us going forward. Uh, and that's why we're doing Black Future Month, right? So last thing, the last thing. <clears throat> this is absolutely, unequivocally, the most important thing that I'm going to share with you in this video. And probably for the whole month. Black Future Month is about projecting ourselves in the future and how we want to be. If you look at our past and you're unhappy about it, if you look at our current state and you're unhappy about it, the only thing we can do to change the future is make better choices now. And I think that the number one thing that we can do as a black community, and not only as a black community, but as a humankind, is to return to spirituality. Now, I'm not saying pick a denomination or what faith, and I'm not going to get into all that, but I'm saying for societies that have God-centered societies where spirituality is first, I think those communities do a lot better. And I think particularly in the black community, faith is one of the few things that we had to hold on to. Now there's a lot of debate about what we should believe and who's right and white Jesus and black Jesus and all that and cool, whatever. We can talk about it in another episode. But in general, I think that it's most important that we come back to a sense of spirituality in general and incorporate that from our day-to-day -day life praying, uh, fasting, uh, learning about our ancestors, uh, teaching spirituality to our children. It just makes you a greater person. And I think that uh, when you seek after spirituality first, all things will come to you. And I think for black people, if we were to do that, if we made a conscious effort to not chase materialism, but chase uh, being more spiritual right now, I think that there's nothing that anybody else on the planet can do with this and we'll be fine going forward in the future. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the list. I hope that this video does as well as last week's. Uh, I put my heart and soul into this. I really thought about it and I hope that this is great for you. I hope this is a conversation starter for you, regardless of what your race is, because truly um, we need all the help that we can get. And um, when black people do well, the whole planet does well. You can check that out in history. It's Black Future Month. It's your boy Is. Thank you for liking, subscribing, making my channel go crazy. I couldn't have did it without you. Please subscribe. If you haven't been getting out my videos, just hit the bell. Peace. Welcome to my channel. My name is Is316 or simply IZ. I'm a socially conscious hip hop artist, community activist, radio and TV personality, and entrepreneur. I've produced and released several albums as well as met some of my favorite artists. This is my channel and I want to be your favorite MC.